welcome to another episode of Fintech Focus TV with me, Toby Babb. Today, I'm delighted to be joined all the way from Iceland with one hell of a backdrop over there by, and I'm going to say this say, say this once and then revert to the easier name, Gudmund Jörg Christiansen. Gudmund, how are you doing? GK, how are you doing? Feel, feel you free are? to call me GK, you know, people do that I, for I, obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for that now, but I thought I thought I had a whirl at the start and I, I, yeah. I, I think I've my my uh, Icelandic is uh, is proving all right at the moment. <laughs> what yeah. a backdrop! What a place over there you've got. Uh, that is uh, that is one hell of a corner office you've got yourself there. It, it is a fantastic view. You know, we we we. You know, one of the reasons why why I moved back and 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 what I missed. You know, when, when living in the Netherlands uh, and you know being a globetrotter for for all all of this year was you know the view. So. So being able to, you know, brainstorm with, you know, all of our clients and with this backdrop and and being able to 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 motivate my team through through, you know, not only you know doing good for the uh, world and 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 making money good, but but also having a little bit of view just lightens up up the day. It certainly does, and that's uh, that's Reykjavik behind us. How how are things over there at the moment? It's it's going well. Uh, well, we we have now the the sec, second wave or or the third wave, de depending on how how you how you count. Uh, unfortunately, there the, the, there was an incident, uh, you know, at the bar that spread like wildflower, flower, and 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 we but we should be recovered by by Christmas. You know, we we take things very seriously here in in, in Iceland. So so what I'm very proud of uh, the government is is you know. Very similar to Lucinity, we we do things by by actually science, and and now the, our government has been doing things by science as well. Well, it's lo lovely to hear someone who's proud of their government at the moment. We're not hearing too many of those sort of sto stories around the world at the moment. Listen, uh, I want I want to touch on that because you, you mentioned Lucinity and and uh, and you've, you you sort of said you know making money good. There's this is this is a, a lovely story behind the company, and I really uh, have bought into reading up about what your business is doing and, and the last couple of years of, of growth and uh, and the value you're bringing to the marketplace. And I was introduced to you by Oliver Blower, who who um, has previously been on the show, who was who was gave me a great introduction to you and said it's a great business and you're a great guy. Um, and I love it. I love you know the whole story of everything. So so if you'd be so kind just to kick us off, tell us a little bit about the business, tell us about Lucinity, but also about your journey so far and how, how you came to uh, uh, to start the business. Absolutely. So so Lucinity, we we are about making money good. So so we focus on on uh, building a a system that continuously improves customer defenses are, uh, against money laundering and and fraud. And we do that through a, a new concept called human AI, which is a, a concept of taking the best of the toolbox from artificial intelligence and the best of the toolbox from actually human intelligence and, and, and amalgamating that to, to, together to create a virtual loop of continuous improvement. And, and, and we, we kind of do that through the you know, through the learnings that we have done over the, you know, a decade in, in, in compliance and artificial intelligence. And, and with the luck that I, you know, I have had, you know, being introduced to, to the wonderful uh, teammates and customers that have been on, on this journey to, uh, with us so, 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 so far. That's fantastic. And it's, uh, and, and that sort of human uh, AI is an interesting sort of terminology, isn't it? Because it's sort of, sort of man and machine debate has been coming for, for a while, but I think, and it was, it was always, yeah, you know, the the machine versus man. You guys are, are talking about it in slightly different terms, aren't you? Yeah, we we uh, so so the story behind the company is that you know I I've been in the in the AI space you know before it was called AI and and I've been you know ever since I, I started to to develop when I was uh, you know. 14. I've always been, you know, fascinated with algorithms and and uh, and so on. And and then I went on to to medical devices and you know analyzing sleep and and, and so on. And then I got you know trapped into this this compliance world when I when I joined a little startup in the Netherlands and and went uh, then that, that was acquired by Nice. Uh, and that was kind of like the the the, the connection with with Oliver Blower. And um, and what we what what throughout the, uh, my my career, I I've always been fascinated with you know how can we use you know algorithms AI to to better humans 
and and not to to replace them but but more like the calculator brought you know faster calculations to to hu human why aren't we thinking about the ai in that that space and and when i entered the, the compliance space uh, we you know i got to know a lot of the the possibilities uh, when i was working as a product manager for for nice uh, and and worked a lot with the Actimize team and the nice teams on on bringing products to to market in the, in the compliance space but it was not really until i, I joined city group where, where i discovered the the power of of thinking about uh, algorithms as as a friend not as a, as a foe uh, and and the, uh, and the concept is really you know i i, I got a lot of uh, you know uh, vendors and others that was, was always coming to me and and also pitches when i was in nice and and others in 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 my life before that hey you know this algorithms this is the best best algorithms in, in in town you all you need to do is to to do this and you can replace a lot of human beings and then i always asked okay fantastic what what do you need for the algorithm to work oh you need a lot of human generated data that you you need all of these you know different labels you need the perfect uh, 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 data uh, and uh, okay let's assume that i have that uh, i'm not saying i do but hmm. let's uh, uh, let's assume what, what what next oh then then we need to tune the algorithms uh, you know every week every month every you know now now and then okay and then i you know when 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 we scroll f forward in time and when we were starting lucidity we said to ourselves why don't we take these con two concepts of a human which actually trains an algorithm and an algorithm that needs training to, uh, to and put them together but there was one critical element of it that we hadn't really solved until I met uh, Justin, who is uh, head of our uh, AI pra practice here in in, uh, in Lucindy. That was how do you really explain decision makings to uh, that algorithms take to humans? Because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, the these algorithms were were, uh, were doing very good, but no one really understood what they were they were doing, and and he's a he's a PhD in explainable AI and and worked for the the financial conduct authority in, in the UK before, and we worked together uh, with my team uh, that comes from City and comes from other to actually be able to explain the decisions of the algorithms to the humans. And that actually meant that we could speed up the decision-making process of the human itself, because now you could understand what the algorithm was predicting and why he was pre predicting it, and we could visualize it. But we didn't stop there. We, we then said, okay, here is the things that I need feedback on. And then the human can actually say in the interface, hey, this is good, this is not good, kind of like Facebook, <laughs> when you say like or, 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 or not like, and then train the algorithm back. So that is kind of like the story of, of human AI, but the, it's also the story of my career and, and, uh, and, and the company. I think that's interesting, isn't it? Because it's those journeys that are quite often so, so important too. And we were talking about this beforehand. A growing trend, I think, of successful startups has been uh, people who are, who are founding these businesses, CEOs in particular, who've, who've come through from that product background. Um, and, and we're seeing more and more people who, who've been uh, product managers come, you know, coming into it. it. Traditionally, it's been a technologist who's had an idea and wants to change the world with it, or it's been a, a salesperson or a business person who's been looking to you know, see one of the problems which they've been looking at. You've uh, you added to that the sort of uh, incumbent who's been frustrated in the enterprise environments to be, to be doing that. And you're an interesting amalgamation of all of those yeah. put, you know, put, put together. Tell us a little bit about, uh, I'm, I'm going I'm to throw two questions at you. One of which is is why the rise of the product manager as a successful entrepreneur has been so you know ac acute, uh, and secondly, tell us, I, I'm I'm really fascinated about your sort of uh, you know collision of all of those different sort of backgrounds to you know, to, to come into that and how that's 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 helped you in your journey so far as well. Yeah, sounds good. So so I think that to be it is not enough to be a a, a product manager to become a successful founder of a, of a company 
But to actually be a good product manager it means that you need to understand the technology, you need to understand the problem, and you need to understand the business, and actually you need to understand how to sell uh, sell uh, your product. Because you know, uh, as as anyone, even though you're working in the consumer business, or if you're looking working in the compliance business, or or B two B SaaS, whatever, you're ma- always making a product for someone, and you need to to start with the user uh, first, and then go back into technology. But you can't go back into technology without actually knowing te- te- technology. So I think that that the successful product managers that that we're seeing coming out is this amalgamation of a lot of things. It, it is technology. It is business. It is sales. It is you know how to really run a successful small enterprise, and that mm-hmm. that that is uh, you know both in 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 uh, Harvard studies that I've seen and and other. Uh, elements uh, or other articles that that the kind, kind of like the the, uh, the reason before uh, because of the rise of the product manager and you 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 saw that a lot in uh, you have seen that a lot of silicon valley over the past 10 years that successful product managers that understand these these elements are becoming ceos and, mm-hmm. and and I think that that is now now starting to happen in in the compliance area and and others because of these elements coming together. For for me, you know, it was a decision where you know I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a techie. You know, I, I started you know my first business uh, uh, when when I was 14, I think, and and sold it off when when I was 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 uh, 17, and and I was just in a basement, uh, you know, developing uh, an application for dyslexic children. Uh, okay. And and you know I, I didn't have a business sense at the moment. I was just doing this for for kids, and I, I like pro- programming. But but my father uh, ta- taught me to 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 sell it. So so and then I sold it off. And then I uh, then then when I went into you know developing, I, I I had always the urge of also selling and 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 making a product for the user. So so throughout my career, it has always been uh, you know. I wanted to end up being an entrepreneur again, but but I knew that I needed to uh, to go through you know the tech, the business, and et cetera before actually launching the company. And then two years ago, I, I did, and and we have been pretty successful since. So success story was built when you were fourteen. Started off when you were fourteen. I love that. Yeah, then- I, I think, uh, there is a lot of misunderstanding by by a lot of entrepreneurs that you know you need to 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 start young to be successful it's more important uh, to to actually plan what you're doing and and then take the leap and go all in and not mm. go hard, half-heartedly in i think that's a really interesting fact isn't it because because we we see it all the time with you know with with you know the, the concept of overnight success and social media is sort of really uh um, boom that where we're, where we're seeing all of these sort of very very unique and very specific success stories of young founders who yeah. you know over overnight explode things but those overnight successes are usually built as you say from from entrepreneurial plays in in, in their teens yeah. uh, and then then the amount of things that crash because they haven't had that experience has been extraordinary I mean you're you're as you say look you've you've, you've been inter- you know living living internationally you picked up various different uh, experiences yeah, I think probably the time at City, which I've always thought is one of the most uh, entrepreneurial financial services or organizations in the world and innovative in the world, uh, is a great starting point and probably been a great incubator of talent such as yourself to be able to come out to it and then allows it to be the right time to then launch a business with all of that rich history of, of colliding all of those sort of things. And I think it's so important to actually think, right, you need all of those different traits to launch a successful business in that space to, to be doing that. So I think it's a really awesome. interesting background you have. Yeah, and, and City, for, for me, it, it was a wonderful time. You know, I spent uh, nearly four, four years there and, and uh, there I had one of the one of the greatest mentors uh, of my life, you know, up to up the, the chain and, and uh, you know, being able to to participate there in, in some of the projects that we did were, were, was wonderful. I, I, I really, you know, regard city and, and the and the culture that was at least, you know, in the groups that I I, I, I saw was 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 quite phenomenal. And but but it was a was a big learning and and uh, it's it's kind of uh, you know when when 
I started to understand some of the failures of um, uh, my uh, my past success, uh, past uh, past product management career. You know, when when I was in the, uh, the the selling to the banks, when I went into the banks and starting to understand, you know, the problem from the inside out, and, and not just always trying to guess what the, what the problem was. It's that classic uh, poacher turn gamekeeper sort of, sort of affair, isn't it? It's amazing how many people learn from the you know from the inside about what they could have done better, and hopefully that lands you in in great stead for this venture as well. Speaking speaking of this venture, as you say, it's a two two year business now, yeah. Um, and uh, it's a young you know it's a young business to enter the sort of issues that we've had over mm -hmm. recent uh, you know over recent over recent times. The last seven eight months or so definitely haven't been e easy navigation for you know for, yeah. for anyone. You know, as a business that's been, uh, you know, was a year, year and a half old when 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 COVID took its grip on the world. Yeah. H have you have you dealt with that? What's been the sort of impact and and and, and opportunity? Because in some ways, that's you know a tremendous challenge to the business. And and you know, uh, you're growing a culture and you're growing a, a, a sort of structure and a team and getting to know each other. And it's and, it, and I know the sort of numbers that you're at and how that's grown. On the other side you're presented with this, you know, and, and, and it's always seems a little bit crass to say this, but this great opportunity where there's an explosion and, and the lights very, very firmly shone on your market area. And yeah. the challenge is then to, to grow and, and maintain that despite all of the extra pressures that are on it. Talk, talk to us through your journey of the last sort of uh, eight, nine months or so, because I imagine that's going to be fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the eight months, uh, nine months have been both, you know, uh, very good to us and, and challenging, you know, and, mm. and we, we were uh, lucky that we, that uh, we closed some of the accounts that, that we, we did, you know, in, in, in January and February, because, you know, we, we saw a, a lot of, you know, uh, decision making being, being pushed back and, and so on from, from, from a, you know, closing a new business in 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 March and and so on. So, so what what we decided, you know, when we when uh, in March was was to go actually and and raise more money and and go uh, more vigilantly after the after the market because you know if you think about anti money laundering, uh, then uh, then. Uh, there is always something going on in, in crisis and, and, and the post crisis there, there's always uh, opportunity in po post crisis, especially in compliance and especially in, 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 in tools that actually make it, makes it easier to operate compliance and, and, and operate for the banks and, and save money, but that yeah, give you better, better coverage. So, so we went out with our Series A because you know we we had the, the the right numbers, we had the right customers in in order to to prove that that we were ready for the next state. And I know that it was quick, but you know if you if you if you put it in context with uh, how how long myself and and my my co um, uh, my co team has been in this industry, we have been actually very long in 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 making that su su success. So, so, but since the, the crisis uh, started, you know, we, we have been busy delivering uh, to, you know, some of the, the largest financial institutions in, in the world, plus into, into, into fintechs. And, and it gave, gave, gave us, uh, and we decided to take a little bit of a step back and look at the product very, 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 very carefully and, and build up the, uh, the, uh, the culture around it and, and make it really, really strong from being a, a product that, that could be delivered uh, to customers without actually the customers ever seeing you. And and we have been have been very successful in that, uh, and and uh, and and creating a culture that that uh, that we don't need you know to sit next to the engineer of the, the bank institutions to deliver the product. Uh, we have grown. Uh, we have doubled in size over COVID, uh, wow. from from a uh, from a uh, employer per perspective. We have been very successful in in hiring, uh, both all in, in the all state. in Iceland. No, we, we our, our our team is predominantly in Iceland, but also in New York. Uh, uh, so, so we've been hiring those two locations. We we're now opening up our uh, branch in, in London. Of course, that will not be an office just yet because you know <laughs> who needs offices? Who needs offices? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Unless but, you've got a view of Reykjavik. <laughs> yeah, exactly, uh, and. Uh, 
uh, and and also from a revenue perspective, this year has been phenomenal. So so we have have uh, have added on 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 clients that and and we have been very uh, successfully partnering with clients, and and that is maybe the the key to what we do is you know we we don't dump uh, the the software on them. We we actually have been partnering with this client, learning from from them, taking feed, feedback, and using this crisis to to. Uh, use this in, uh, this intimacy that Zoom brings, being able to bring everyone around the table actually easier than uh, flying once in a while into into a meeting and then hopefully com coming back. So we have been been able to create this you know partnership that that we always wanted to do. Incredible, and I, and I, and I love that. I mean, it's it, I think everyone's always been um, yeah you know, this year been particularly sort of coy about um, whether they can say they're they're doing well. But I love saying, you know, I think I think at a time with so much bad news around, I think it's really important that people should be able to share those those sort of things. And when when you've got a good, well-run business that that can, you know, share that sort of uh, story of international growth and opportunity and 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 success over that period, I think it's 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 uh, it's great to be able to to hear that and hear people do, doing well with it. A lot of it has been, uh, as you say, circumstantial around, uh, you know great company great sort of position but that offense sort of sort of play is bold right yeah. to go out and say in march when everyone was uh was in retreat at that sort of stage and going into de you know, defense mode you guys have, have sort of said right now's the time to uh you know to, to turn the handle a little bit and, and look at you know look at that sort of opportunity to do that was that or was that something which was just agreed straight away was that opportunistic or was it something there which you said right this is absolutely a time with full conviction to go out there and, and do that and what was your response to it because i've heard a lot of stories about um you know whilst there's money around at the moment you've got to jump through a lot more hoops to uh, to secure that and, and you've sort of alluded to it a little bit before strong team good track record right marketplace and all that sort of thing you've got the sort of perfect storm of things that investors want to be hearing but talk to me talk to us a little bit about that journey and how and, and how easy or difficult it was to raise yeah, so so I was very lucky with the investors uh, in our seed uh, investment, which was two million dollars in 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 twenty nine uh, in early twenty nineteen, and and uh, the the you know when when I when I came into the board and said you know hey now it's time to to raise more more money, you know they they said to us absolutely go out uh, we will have your back. Uh, and so, so there was always a, a a cushion for us, you know. If if the if the if it was a failure, then uh, my current investors, you know, had our back. So mm. so, and that was, you know, allowed us to go out with, you know, proud and 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 tell the story about how we can actually make money good, and how lucidity can change the the current landscape of uh, anti monitoring and and the and the the uh, how we can protect banks and and be the quiet strength behind uh, banks in 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 their effort to to, to actually do better at money laundering uh, uh, and uh, anti money laundering and and, and, so, uh, and so on so so of course you know we needed to to talk to a lot of investors and there was a lot of hesitation in in of the in of the investors but but our uh, uh, the investors that came in karma and by founders they they were not in it to to uh, just look at uh, covid as covid they were they were in it that that they saw a company that that actually could come very very strong out of the covid situation hadn't over invested in field sales and and all of just you know overselling the product prior to covid uh, had a ready product that had been already proven in fintechs and and uh, and in in tier one banks and 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 in a record time and had mm -hmm. a uh, so 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 they said to us uh, let's let's go let, let's back, back this up and and I was lucky enough to then have all of the investors that, that all, all already put money into the, the 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 business also backing us up. So mm -hmm. so so we uh, so so the entire story I think is you know it's not about COVID. It's about proven track record of execution, and and we had that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's absolutely key, isn't it? People are looking for that for that sort of you know when, when you're. When you're in this situation, it's about what's a you know what's a sure bet 
and a yeah. short bet usually is around that sort of uh, proven track record. I'm very interested in something you said there, which is about record time. You know, you've been you've been able to get into places in record time. One of the big sort of strangle uh, phases for, for for businesses is the speed of adoption and procurement, and we've spoken about that a lot in the show in previous previous episodes. As someone who's bucked the trend on that and been able to to, to sort of put record time in into the adoption of product, what was your secret to that? A lot of uh, batting on the on the right people, because you know, the the thing is that uh, uh, now I'm gonna tell 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 my key secret to selling. You you don't sell to organizations. You sell to people. Yeah, <laughs> and, very true. And I think I think that is a quote from many 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 <laughs> business books, <laughs> uh, 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 especially scale up, which is one of my my favorite, and and. Um, and, and I think that, that when you are, are out there, you know, going into uh, opportunities that, that, that you think are opportunities, you, you need to, to take a look at what is the problem that you're trying to solve. And, mm-hmm. and I think a lot of uh, entrepreneurs that are first entrepreneurs go out uh, and, and try to sell to a big organization or a small organization saying, hey, this is what I got, you know, Please buy it instead of understanding actually what what needs to be be done and and why it needs to be done, and you know in this compliance space which I see far too many people um, uh, fail at is to understand the nuances that that this what you're selling also need to adhere to regulations and and be under scrutiny of internal audit external audit regulators etc uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, so uh, as an example, we spent the first uh, six months of the business not coding anything, but only uh, uh, cre- uh, making sure that all of our security, all of our compliance, all of uh, all of the regulations, etc., wa- was in uh, wa- was in order, and and we actually did a meta analysis of the AML regulations uh, uh, in Europe and 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 US at that time, and now we have have it more more global, and coded it into a knowledge graph so that we could say to clients, hey, this is actually what we think you need to do. Can you confirm it? Uh, instead of going, hey, I have a blank piece of paper here, please, you know, I have an engine that can potentially do some AML rules. Mm-hmm. So, so I think this approach of, of uh, empathy for what the people are, are dealing with allows you to, 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 to speed up the, some, some of the, 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 the effort of, of getting into organizations and having people wanting to, to work with us. But it didn't also, it, it did help also to, to have, you know, our background, you know, coming from, you know, Justin coming from the uh, UKFCA, I come from um, City and Nice Actimai, Arno spent, uh, you know, 20 years at, at City and, and he was always known to being the, the guy that, the, the engineer that, that everything worked, that, that he touched. So, so that track record also helped us to 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 create this uh, uh, this atmosphere in this company of, of execution. And it builds that confidence within people. So you, you, that sort of classic solutions to the sell to you know to, to people, the listening and the empathising with the actual problems, and being able to get that genuine sponsorship from you know from from tier ones has always been the sort of case. And, and, and as you say, it's. The difference between preaching at people and forcing a product onto onto them, rather than actually sort of taking them through that through that process, which I think is so so important as well. So you, you that, mentioned to, to add to that, I, I think that uh, you know if you listen to human AI, yeah. and if you, if you if you look at our our one of the core values is, is empathetic innovation, and yeah. and it's a it's a two words that are very strange putting together empathy yeah. empathy and innovation. But, but I think that is key to the entire DNA of Lucinity, which is we are empathizing with the, the reviewers of the, that needs to review all of the AML alerts. We're empathizing with IT and, and security because it needs to be well done. You can't do it half-heartedly. And, we, we, uh, we, and we're innovating around the human, not against the human. I think yeah. that that is has been key to our success so far. 
Well, listen, it's, it's, it's no surprise to me that that's been successful as a, as a route to do it. You mentioned as well during that that you were saying that you could illustrate the fact that you hadn't over sort of stretched on field sales and sort of, you know, what, what, what's the classic mistake of overselling and stretching yourself too thin? And there's yeah. been a sort of patient process throughout that. Tell us about your approach to sales, because it seems like, you know, from, from speaking to you, sales is very much in your DNA programmed in from your dad when you were uh, you know, sort of 16, 17 years, years old. Tell us, is, is that, have you got a sales team? Are you working, you know, are you, or are you leaving the set, the sales at front or is it a team effort? How, how's that working? So uh, I think throughout the lifetime of this company, you know, I will be leading two things. Uh, you know, even, even when we are, uh, you know, two, three, four billion dollar company, you know, we, we uh, you know, I, I will do two things, sell, selling and, and, you know, being with customers, understanding customers, listening to customers, and then making great products. That, that is yeah. what, what I am good at and, and, and why I go into the work, uh, in, in, into work at the moment. But, but it is this listening part and, and being able to, you know, being able to strike up a conversation and, 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 and understanding, you know, what compliance anti laundering officers are, are going through because, it is not an easy job. You, you're constantly scrutinized. You're constantly, you, you, you get all the blame for none of the things for, for keeping you know, the, uh, the bank and the, the industry much safer than if it wouldn't have the, the scars that, that you have. And, and all we are do, trying to do at Lucinity is to bring innovation into that to, to make it, that job a little bit more bearable and and a, a, and a little bit more 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 easier, but but with the respect of what these people are doing in the banks already. You you mentioned something there that I loved hearing. It says even when I think you said even when you're three, four, five billion pound uh, business at that at yeah. that sort of stage, which I love the certainty of, of, of that within it. Um, but even when you are there, what's what's next? There's a journey on that pathway. You're two years old at the moment. It's been going yeah. brilliantly. You've doubled the, you know, the, the the business, which is incredible. That the the, uh, the you know the the results are moving all in the right direction. We're coming up now to the end of the year. We're in Q Q4. Um, 2021's a, a you know uncertain time for, for for most people, but it sounds like you've got some certainty behind yourself. Yeah. Give us a give us an insight into what's next for the business. I, I think it's uh, what, what is next for the business is that we, we have been uh, leading with, you know, partnership with, with our clients and, and we want to then bring that in a always easier and easier fashion to, to new and new, new, new clients. And, and uh, from, from a product perspective, uh, then we just launched a new product called uh, Actor Intelligence. And, and what we... We said to ourselves uh, is that everyone around the, uh, around, around the table of the vendor space is, is focusing always, I'm going to do the, the detection of anti money laundering a little bit, little bit better. And, mm -hmm. and, and I can always say uh, that my anti money laundering detection is better than the next one. But, 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 you know, to be honest, uh, all of the algorithms uh, around the table, all of the, the rules around the table, it's just an incremental step upwards. Uh, and, and, and so on. We had then, then we had brought to, to, to the market uh, our human AI case manager that speeds up the, the, the human decision-making process of saying this is money laundering and this is not, and, and easing the, the way that, that the analysts are able to understand what is behind actually the alerts that we're, we're generating. But, but, we, uh, but when we were sitting down on a customer meeting with, with actually one of our, our, our smaller, smaller clients, like the compliance officer said, hey guys, I, I love your detection algorithm and I love the way that you explain it in the interface and, and the feedback and how, how it continuously improves. But I'm missing a big piece here. I'm missing a piece around understanding the client. I want to understand actually what is the history of the client? Who is the client interacting with? Who is, uh, who is this person behind that transaction? And, and, and we said to ourselves, you know, wow, okay, we, we are in behavior analytics and we are in understanding how people uh, behave inside transactions. Why don't we turn it around and start to 
uh, started to create a, a new application that would really challenge the KYCs of the world, which is a box checking exercise of, you know, are you, who is the original uh, owner of that money, etc. And we all know the forms that you, you go into a bank and you, you click a lot of forms, but do, what do they really say? So we said to ourselves, let's create a, a reversed way of thinking about it. Let's reverse to say, we are going to have the transactions and the behavior of the client tell you what kind of a customer you are and say, hey, we think this is a risky customer or not a risky customer because he, he see is behaving in that way, but they're your KYC system or your uh, customer lifecycle um, uh, uh, system is telling, oh, this is a low, low, uh, uh, low risk customer because he says that it's all coming from salary. But actually we're seeing it all coming from this country that is high risk country. Where is the dis uh, discrepancy? And then change, and with this model, we believe that we can change the way that compliance is able to look at anti look at the problem more holistically and, and, and starting to focus on, on who and why and not just on a single transaction and whether or not that transaction is, is, is a problem or, or, or not. And I think that is the, 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 where we will emphasize over the next two years why we bring that to market. We have had that in, in, in uh, beta for, for, for three months and we, uh, uh, we, we just launched it uh, actually uh, two weeks ago. Amazing. So it's exciting times coming up for you then. Absolutely. And we're hearing about international growth as well with London on the, on the radar and, and uh, the next steps in this, uh, this multi-billion pound assault. I'm very excited to hear about it. And I'm sure people will as well. I'd love to track it and have you back on and, and hear about what's happening yeah. next year and, and, and uh, bring you back on, onto the show. If there are people here who are listening, who should be reaching out to you at the moment and what's the best way of them to do that with you? So, so, so the best way to, to reach out, out to us and the easiest way uh, to remember it is hello at Lucindi. Uh, just send us, a, send us a mail and, and we would love to hear from uh, fintechs and, 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 and also uh, big banks that, that have a, a need and a want to, to change the way that they do either anti-money laundering, uh, monitoring or case management, or actually want to understand the customer better. Uh, we, we are fully modular, so you can just start with one and, and then, then take on other models. We, we work in, uh, in an environment with other, other, other vendors, so, so there's no rip and replace in our, our world. So, so, uh, so we would also love to, to hear from uh, the, the IT infrastructure people that, that would just want more resiliency and, and want to go into the cloud. Perfect. Well, listen, I, I believe they should be uh, reaching out to you. I'm sure they will after, after hearing that. It's so exciting. I love hearing uh, good news stories at the moment. And it's, uh, and it's a business that you should be massively proud of. I'm sure you are. Thank you. And congratulations on everything you've been doing so far. GK, it's been an utter pleasure. Thanks for sharing that journey on, on the program today. Thank you so much for, for having me. Absolute pleasure. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon on another episode of FinTech Focus TV. Thanks a lot.